In this lesson, we're going to be building a chord progression generator in Ableton. And this is going to be mainly using the chord and scale MIDI devices to try and create specific chord voicings around certain scale degrees so that our one chord will have a particular flavor and our five chord will have a particular flavor. And that way we can actually just build more flexibly our uh, chord progression and you'll see how that works. So I'm going to start by just, you know, create a basic uh, brand new Ableton project. I'm going to delete my empty uh, tracks there. I'm going to do a little search for piano up here. I'm just looking for an instrument. I'm going to take this dark chord piano and just uh, drop that on there. All right, now I'm going to create a new clip and I'm just going to put some basic notes in there, right? So using the B key here, I'm just going to say, you know, it's a pretty standard progression here. Um, back to, well, let's do E. All right. So I'm going to grab these notes here and I'm going to Go ahead and I'm going to kind of lengthen them out like that so I have this longer loop. And right now I'm just getting one individual note. Let me just turn that down a little bit. Right, so I'm just getting a single note, but we want to turn those into chords. So I'm going to switch to my instrument sort of uh, effects view here. And I'm going to go up into MIDI effects, which is over here. And I am going to get rid of my piano search. I'm going to want this a scale, and I'm going to want chord. All right, so I'm just going to double click scale. I'm going to double click chord. And now I can see those down here in my effects view. I'm going to want the scale first, and I'm going to, I'm going to rename that notes to allow. And you'll see what this means in just a minute. Okay, and then I can... You don't have to name it voicing or chord, both is fine, but I'm going to name it voicing because that's more precise to what we're doing. Now I'm going to grab both of these and I'm going to hit Command G to group them together into a device rack. And the final step for getting this visually set up, you want to make sure that you have clicked on this button here and you want to make sure that this button here is illuminated, right? So those are basically show hide device, device chain list, which is what this is doing. These are device chains right here. And then show hide devices, which is, is showing, you know, the, the scale and chord devices. So you want to have both of those visible in your project. You also may notice here that you might have one of these zone editors, open key velocity chain just hit hide because we're not going to be using the zone editor at all so you can just hide it to keep things a little tidier all right so when we are playing in our key and we're going to look at the midi uh, clip here i'm going to just kind of work from the assumption here in this example that we're in the key of c so in the key of c a c is our first note we can also call it the root right we could call D here, we could call that our two, sometimes called the nine. E is our three, four, or sorry, F is our four, G is our five, A is our six, B is our seven, and then C is our octave. So these are the notes in a C major scale. We do not have an A sharp or B flat here. We do not have an A flat or G sharp. We do not have a G flat, F sharp. And we do not have a D sharp E flat, and we do not have a C sharp D flat. We don't have any of those notes. Those notes are not in the key of C, and we can use the notes to allow, we can use this basically to constrain the notes that are going to be coming through on this particular chain. So what I'm going to do is I am going to rename this chain um, Major 9. Okay, and this is just going to be for one and four chords, and you'll see what that means in just a minute. What I'm essentially going to do is I'm going to say the first and fourth, so the one and four chords here, correlate to the first and fourth notes in my key. 
In my key, that is C and F. C and F are the root and the four. So in here, I can come in here to my notes to allow area, and I can actually manipulate this to make sure that only C's and F's come through. So this grid, I want to take a second to describe what it does. So all the incoming notes, those are represented by vertical columns. And all outgoing notes are represented by horizontal columns. So we can think, okay, if a C, which is this note right here, if a C comes in, in is vertically, we want a C to come out. But if a C sharp comes in, we want to hear a C. If a D comes in, that's fine. But if D sharp comes in, we want to hear D. E comes in, E goes out. F comes in, F goes out. F sharp comes in, we want to hear G. Or sorry, F. If a G comes in, G goes out. So hopefully you're seeing kind of what we're doing here is we're basically able to use this to decide based on the note that comes in, what note comes out. It's also an option to just say, you know what, no note comes out. So we're not even going to allow these notes to be shifted, we're just gonna ignore them. If we hear an F sharp, it's just not gonna be processed, okay? But we don't actually want the whole C major scale, which is what we see now, C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. We see the entire C major scale here, but we just want our one and four chords, which was C and F. So we don't want to hear e, uh, Ds. We don't want to hear Es, Gs, As, or Bs. We just want to hear C and F, okay? And let's see how that works now. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just get rid of these extra notes. So I've got this simple note progression, C, G, F, and E. And as I play it, what we see is that we hear the C and we hear the F, but we don't hear the G or the E. And that's because it's not being allowed by our notes to allow. And you can actually see it light up down here. All right, so C, F, C, F. If we wanted to hear the G, we'd have to add it in there. But we don't want to because we just want our one and four chords to be let through on this device chain. And now we're going to go ahead and we are gonna construct a major nine chord. So if somebody, if our music is playing a C or an F, we want it to be a major nine chord. We're gonna do that using our chord here. So the C or F come through. On top of that, we wanna add a third. That's four half steps above the root. So four half steps above C would be an E. Then we want our fifth, that is seven half steps above the root. Whether it's a C or an F, it's gonna play four, it's, it's gonna create these additional notes. Right now, these are creating full triads, root, third, and fifth, and we can hear that. Now we have whole chords, right? But they're not major nine chords, these are just basic triads. So we wanna go in and we wanna add a seven. So we're gonna go ahead and change that to 11. That's gonna be our major seven. And we wanna add a nine, which is gonna be 12 plus two is 14. So now we're getting a major nine chord voiced, but only on one and four, only on C and F. And we can see Okay, so now let's do a basic triad for G, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and select this. I'm gonna hit Command-D to duplicate it. I'm gonna hit Command-R to rename it. And I'm just gonna say triad. And this is just gonna be for our five chord. Okay, it's not gonna be for any other chord. And so I don't want um, a nine and I don't want a seven, I just want the root, the third, and the fifth. And I don't want C, and I don't want F, I actually just want G. So let's listen to that. And if we look at the MIDI, we can see we're now hearing the G chord, right? And if we look at our device rack back here, 
we can see that only one in four chords are coming through this device chain while only the five is coming through there. So now we're gonna do one more and we are gonna duplicate this and we're gonna make this for minors. So this is gonna be for the two, the three, and the six chords in our key. So I'm gonna just, I'm using Roman numerals here and I'm gonna turn this into a minor 11 chord. Okay, so this is gonna be two, three, and uh, what did I say, six, six chords, right? So all of those are gonna come through as minor 11 chords. What that means, first of all, let's make sure that the notes to allow is correct. We're gonna to wanna to allow the two, which is D, the uh, three, which is E, and then the six, which is A, okay? We're gonna to wanna to allow those through. So we can see now how the E is coming through as just a single note, okay? This would work on twos, threes, and sixes. There's no two or six in our chord progression so far. So we're only seeing the E. But let's go look at our voicing now. So we want this to be minor. That means the third is not gonna be four half steps, but three half steps. That's a minor third. Fifth is the same. And then we're gonna add on a seven to that, which is gonna be 10. Okay, that's gonna be a minor seven. And then we want to add on top of that an 11, which is five half steps above an octave. So five plus 12 is 17. So now when we play this, we can go back into our MIDI clip. We can change these. Around. And we can just drag around these individual notes knowing that the chords are being built correctly according to these rather precise definitions. My one and four chord are major nine, my five chords just a triad, and my two, three, and six chords are minor 11. So it makes kind of like a nice vibe. I can uh, you know, even drag in like a simple beat here. If I were to do like, let's see what kind of clips I might have here. Bring this in here. I'm gonna bring the volume down. Bring the tempo down. And it's that easy, so that's how you can build a chord progression generator. It makes it real easy to move these root notes around, come up with whatever chord progression you want. You just have to know a little bit about your keys. Uh, you have to know what kind of notes are in a key, what, you know, what's in the key of A flat, that sort of thing. So yeah, all of that information is available. If you're interested in learning that stuff, then you can learn that on my website, musicprotest.com. Uh, it's also available all over the internet, so that's not hard information to come by. But hopefully you've learned something, and uh, leave some comments, and hopefully I'll see you here again. All right, thanks.